Hey guys, welcome back to this podcast, Fits Your Macros. It's me, Coach Keeling from Keep Plus and the man, the games master. Go ahead. Coach Ryan. I think that's my name. <laughs> Coach Ryan might be my name. I got I a lot of names. I haven't changed it yet. <laughs> oh <laughs> man, yeah. Just oh, so what's well, the topic? Gosh, another episode down. We are tackling sugar, sugar cravings, want to eat it, how to maybe curb the cravings a little bit. It's going to be a really fucking good episode. All right. Like yeah. out of all the episodes to watch, I think everybody in the world will need to watch or listen to this one is my opinion. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And Kayleen has done a lot of, uh, she's put a lot of work into getting this thing ready for you guys. She's very serious about this. So we have a pretty good list of stuff we're going to talk about today. A couple different topics um kind of runs through the list Kayleen what are some things we're going to hit on today just you know in a sense so people want to stick around yeah so okay I've got a little note here so don't mind me if I'm looking over here um so we're going to talk a little bit so for those of you that don't know background is biochemistry so I'm like really into all like this metabolic pathways all that stuff that is probably pretty boring but i know some of you are into it so we will tiptoe into that we'll make it easy for anybody to understand um so yep. first we're going to talk about how sugar affects the brain because it's important to understand this to curb it and then we're also going to talk about you know different ways uh like how glucose works in the body how to curb the sugar cravings maybe when's the best time to eat sugar and like a little bit of tips and tricks along the way that we have both picked up i feel like so ryan comes from a different background for me like i'm definitely more science-based and ryan's just like i don't know what you would call it, but just like I, well you've got the experience over like how many years i mean you were doing this from the womb i think you came out like pretty much you know <laughs> so, came out with the training app in my pocket yes, <laughs> ready to go yes yes before cell phones were well no you cell phones might have been invented when you're born i don't know oh, i don't know either 92 yeah. hard to say uh, maybe not maybe the first cell phones but not. anyway yeah. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a nice, well-rounded episode. I think that everybody will enjoy whether you love science, hate science, want to curb sugar, want to know how sugar works in the body. I'm super stoked about it. Yeah, for sure. And like Kayleen was saying, you know, it's more science approach to be coming from her. And I will hit those of you that are like, what the hell? Why would she go straight to ghrelin? I'll hit you Crazy. With, <laughs> with some uh, some of the other side of the coin. So everybody will get a benefit. So I think fair to start with, uh, Kayleen, kind of like who who deals with sugar cravings? Uh, Freaking everyone. Well, I would say everyone, but you're not a sweets person, right? No, not me. No. But, <laughs> but I mean, are. for the most part, it's like <laughs> probably... 99.9% .9 of people at some point, I mean, I, I, there's been times I'm sure I've craved sugar in my life. I just can't think of it. I'm not, you know, a robot over here, but pretty much everybody. And I mean, you kind of, you know, have a unique dieting experience from uh, being a competitor. So I'm sure there's times you've craved sugar, but also so does pretty much anyone on any type of a diet or, you know, even people that are like well-trained athletes. Even, you know, if they're oh, yeah. doing crazy workouts and doing all this, you know, you're going to get to the point where your body might crave sugar. So pretty much everybody. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about like prep, Kayleen, and, you know, recap your season a little bit here because we just finished that up and tell us, did you deal with those sugar cravings? Yes, of course. So yeah, we just finished up like three weeks ago season. We kind of wham down. Thank you, ma'am, through a couple shows. And, yes, you we know. Did. It was a, uh, it was an experience. I'll tell you, um, I have a severe sweet tooth. I'll be the first one to admit it. I love all the sweet things. <laughs> and so previous preps, I definitely, um, made it more of a priority to make a lot of shit fit in there. <laughs> so uh, this yes, time I'd have. say, you know, you tell every day, cereal every day, but this prep was a very different and, I actually ended up using some of the strategies that we're going to talk about today um, to help me reduce my sugar cravings during prep. And I got to say, they freaking worked. All right. So yeah, awesome. um, I love being the test subject of all these different things. Like uh, that's what I'll do for my clients. I'll put my, myself out there in the name of, uh, you know, science, just like my, if it fits your macros or I mean, if it wasn't with your macros. So uh, yeah, um, I, I actually have like, once the prep got going, the smoothest sailing prep 
I've had in a while as far as sugar cravings go. And yeah, I'm excited to share. So, so these sugar cravings you had, I mean, before we get to the next piece here, when did it hit you for the most part, if you get them? Hmm. Well, like, is there a specific time of day? Is Did you just do something? Did you wake up? Are you waking up at 2 a.m. like, dang, I need a cookie? Or what's the deal? Oh, for me, it would be like visual cues, like seeing somebody eating something sugary. Or like, okay. for me, I would hate going to the gym and seeing the commercials for like Dairy Queen. Because I'm like, fuck you guys. Damn like, it. Yeah. And you're you like, know. dang, the blizzard. <laughs> I need the blizzard. <laughs> I need that upside down blizzard right now in my life. But like, yeah. So, I mean, and of course, after, uh, like, for the longest time, too, personally, I know this is a little, like, psychological, like, I would treat myself with, like, sugar and stuff, like, oh, like, I killed my workout, let's get yep. an ice cream cone, you know, which yeah. I feel like a lot of people do, but, uh, definitely, yeah, it's not always, yeah, for sure, and I mean, <laughs> so even though, you know, I, I would say it never goes away either, you just have ability to control it better, because as we're talking to you, you are the, the kind of, uh, if it fits your macros, food queen over here. So maybe we should jump over there to what is it worth your macros, right? Uh, what's the food yeah. of the week? Because I mean, you can't say that you don't have sugar cravings if you got <laughs> this going down. <laughs> yes. So um, it's funny because when you're shopping and prep, uh, sometimes you just see things that you're like, I need to get this now and I'm not going to touch it until after prep, but it looks Save it up. really Stock good. It up. <laughs> and so there were two things that I did over um, the prep. And actually today's going to be a special episode because I asked Instagram, which one they wanted me to review. And I also put the option of both and okay. both is winning. So yeah, we've got nice. two cereals. Um, one is cinnamon toast, crunch, cinnamon roll cereal. So I don't know if you can find a picture of it, but cinnamon. instead of like the squares, they're little cinnamon buns oh, in the okay. cereal. And yeah. so it's like, let me try this out. Now, Brad over here is shaking his head because he did not think it was worth the macros. I, however, jammed on that shit hardcore. <laughs> I think that was so good. <laughs> like, in fact, it's still, I don't know how it's still existing because I, you know, managed my sugar cravings. I haven't devoured the whole box. But um, I don't know. It's a 10 out of 10 from me. Brad, what would you score it? just you know to get an even opinion he's giving it a five i give it a ten so five. but the other thing he's not super sweet tooth though he's got some sweet tooth but not nearly the degree of me he's working from home today so we get a special interjection here there you go. Brad. just kidding yes um, guest episode <laughs> guest episode so the other <laughs> thing i bought and this is like a week before prep i saw this and i was like i need to try this it was m&ms with cookies inside have you seen this M&M's with cookies inside of the M I've seen a cookie with M&M's in it. No. So this is like, you know, not have seen... like peanut M&M's. No, never seen that. So this that. is like, it's chocolate chip cookie M&M's. But so that sounds like, like something I do want to see. Oh my gosh. I, I would show you, but that was something that did not last through the week after. Practice. Where did you even get this? I wonder all the time if you have like a special store or something. Are you getting this at the normal store? No, I'm lazy. I just go to Target, Walmart, you know. Target. Wherever. Target is yeah. the place, isn't it? That's where yeah. all I the treats I'm about are. Target, because like yeah. I shop there a lot. So when I saw it, I was like, no, I'm going to grab this right now. So anyway, better get it. 10 out of 10 for those. For me, I think Brad would also say there were 10 out of 10. No? Which ones? Like cookie MMs. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 10 out of 10 from Brad. So <laughs> I think that's a pretty even balance. If you've ever had like the crispy right. MMs, do you know like? Crispy M Ms. Do you remember those from? Like I, I I literally know about one kind of M M. Like, oh my god, it's either a wrapper <laughs> or it's the original M M. Okay, that's all I know. No, oh my gosh, you need to expand your horizon. Your birthday's coming up. I'll get you a sampler pack. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I need an M M sampler. Like, and I'll just yes. test one every every other oh, day. I'm writing that down. One little one little M M. That's, that's hilarious. Okay. But so, so yes. you went 10 out of 10. That's interesting on both of these today. I don't think yes. that's happened yet. And they did not make it through the week. I definitely fit those in every single day after my prep because I was like, these are fucking really good. So if anyone's working at MMs, whoever makes that watching this and you want to sponsor our show, let us know. Don't even, don't even <laughs> sponsor my show, please. Aileen will sit there and eat a whole bowl of MMs through the episode. 
this whole episode will go out the window. <laughs> we'll do it every time. <laughs> okay, cool. So that's good. So 10 out of 10 on those. Um, and so when you were eating those, how did this affect your brain? Because <laughs> that's kind of our next thing, right? Let's talk about sugar and how it affects the brain. I, I always say like sometimes after long periods of, you know, not eating these things, it's like I have them and I swear I can feel my brain tingle. <laughs> like maybe it's no just doubt. me, but it's like, oh, you get that dopamine pathway is what we're going to talk about. So um let's just get into it. Uh, Basically, we are hardwired to seek out sugar because, you know, our brain and so many processes within our body go off glucose. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of animal you are. If you want to survive, your body is going to hardwire you to prefer sugar over other flavors. And so it's, and, and it's not that sugar's bad. Like, obviously I don't want anybody to go into this episode thing like sugar's worse. Like we all need it, but obviously we don't want to eat it in large sources. Then you got other problems because uh, glucose, glucose, <laughs> can, it's good for the brain, but too much of it, it can send you into shock and other terrible, terrible things. So Damn. that's, <laughs> yeah, like we don't want that. We want to live. So Basically, when your blood glucose goes up, your insulin regulates it. And if you don't have it regulating it, that's when you got diabetes, all those metabolic issues there. So there's two effects that sugar can have on the brain. The first is the neural effects like I just talked about when you're just like, oh, fuck, this is so good. Yeah. And the second is the hormonal response. And that's the one we are going to talk about today. Um, As Ryan mentioned, I'm just going to hop right into ghrelin right here. Jump right into ghrelin. (laughs) Jump right into ghrelin. Um, So (laughs) ghrelin is the hunger hormone. That is the one that is like telling you, hey, it kind of ramps up as you go farther from eating something. So like you just like glucose lowers your ghrelin increases, tell your body, hey, you need to eat to stay alive. And uh, like, I guess my first hack, so not hack, I don't want to say hack, but like, I I listened to this podcast about sugar and they talked about this one aspect of it. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to, I need to test this out personally because previous preps, um, I would eat a shit ton of fruit. Like basically all my carbs were fruit because it was like, you know, fibrous. I'm like, oh, I'm getting, you know, all the micros, full vitamins and all that good stuff. So I'm like, this is a win-win. But like every other prep I've been freaking starving to, you know, I just would get these hunger cues so often. And so I was listening to this podcast and I talked about fructose or fructose, depending on how you say it. I'm going to say fructose because it looks like fructose to me, even though I think you pronounce it fructose. Um, anyway, say whatever you so want. <laughs> I will say whatever I want. You can at me in the comments. I don't care. <laughs> so basically fructose is found in fruit and it's also found of course in high fructose corn syrup. Now high fructose corn syrup is going to have a tremendous amount more fructose versus fruit although yep. even with fruit there's a varying spectrum of fruit you know blueberries are going to have way less than say you know mangoes like something that's super sweet pineapple all that good stuff so um and i was eating like some of the sweeter fruits when i would eat anyway so fructose they have found out has an effect on ghrelin and what it actually will do is it's going to reduce the hormones that suppress ghrelin so what that is basically meaning is that like if you're eating a lot of high fructose in general it can be fucking with your hormones that tell you whether you're hungry or not and so like I was like oh shit you know and and I think I told you I was like oh shit like I just found out that like fruit can make you really hungry and you're like yeah and so it's like I'm gonna try this out and so I basically eliminated just about all not all fruit I started eating blueberries at the end, but like, I mean, I used to eat like cantaloupe, watermelon, grapes, you name it, like all those super sugary fruits, like they would be my carbs for my prep. And so I actually switched them to vegetables and I found myself way more satiated on this prep. So 
Yep. Like, I guess the little key point of that is, is like, if you're filling a lot of your day in fruit with fruit and you're finding yourself or high fructose corn syrup type things, the juices, all the, I mean, high fructose corn syrups and all the shit. So, yep. and it's soda. Yes. <laughs> and I'm not saying to like eliminate it completely because it's just about impossible, but just be mindful of the things you are consuming. If you are consuming a lot of high fructose corn syrup maybe you should reduce that and see how your hunger cues go. Yeah, totally. And that's the, you know, the interesting thing about food choices in general is that, you know, as you go, you learn more and more about food choices you can make and how they affect your body and your mind. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of ones that affect your mind. Pretty much everything you eat does something to your brain, people. Everything you eat does something to your brain. So if you don't know what it's doing, you better figure that shit out. Okay. Don't go crazy. Just listen to Kayleen over here. She'll tell you, but you know, the truth is it does have an effect. So that's one of those things, you know? Um, and like, that's interesting. You say that though, there's this one diet. Uh, I was just telling you about this before this it's called the fruit till noon diet. It's almost kind of the opposite of what you're talking about in a way, but it's not because um, basically, I forget how it started exactly. I think it was some kind of like medicine they used to use in like India or something. They've used it for like 3000 years. It was considered to be like a diet that could treat all kinds of ailments that people had. And basically the only way it worked was you could only eat fruit for a certain percent of the day. So like you wake up and you'd have fruit and then, you know, a couple hours go by, you have a snack, it's fruit. And then, you know, your lunch is fruit. And then after that, you shift focus towards eating like, you know, protein sources, all that. And so what uh, their whole backing on that is, is to do with the idea that it's highly digestible, right? If you have some fruit or something like that. So it's minimal load on the body. And then you get the simple carbs to come in and uh, mess with it. So, you know, it's kind of down the same vein of what you're saying though, you know, where maybe, uh, cause like you, for sure, when you were eating fruit, you would be combining it with probably fats and proteins and all that. And that's an interesting thing we've never really talked about on the show. Maybe that's for another episode, but it's like how, when you combine different nutrients, how it affects your body, right? Protein, carbs, and fats together has a different effect than just carbs and fats or protein and carb, you know? So that's just, a, I just wanted to throw that in there. You know, fruit till noon. It's an interesting yeah. diet. You should look into it more. And I'm definitely not saying don't eat fruit because fruit is no. delicious. It's great. But if you find yourself being out hungry aside and you're eating fruit, like for every single meal, like I was during prep and in a calorie yep. deficit, it might be beneficial to reduce the amount of fruit you're eating. And, totally. And you know, definitely course, reduce the high fructose corn syrup because oh, come on. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We don't need any of that garbage in there. So yeah. Do we uh, have anything else to add to there? Shall we move on? Yeah. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. Okay. So like what? I was going to talk about when you should maybe and just glucose. get some glucose, get some sugars. Yeah. Sugar. And sugar. <laughs> <laughs> That's never mind me about something anyway. Uh, yeah. So one of the best times you can you should, or like, if you're going to ingest something like super sugary, the best time that your body will accept it with open arms is immediately after a soul crushing workout or, you know, slightly less than soul crushing. Basically, if you got lots of activity in your body will be ready to, uh, digest that more readily than if you've been like, kind of like sitting on your ass all day, or maybe at your computer all day. And Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that. <laughs> why why does that happen? So why is it really good for people to get the glucose in post-workout? Like, what's it going to do for them as far as well, any of their goals, right? Because we're talking about people that are build muscle, burn and fat, whatever. What's it going to do? Right. So we're like in the gym breaking it all down. And like, so once we're done breaking it down, the body's going to go into repair mode. And if you don't have anything ready to repair, and like I said, uh, you know, body, almost everything, uh, functions off of glucose. So yep. uh, it's going to be ready and willing to take up all that glucose. Your insulin is more sensitive at that time. And you're just going to be like freaking building stuff way better than, you know, alternatively, if you just like didn't eat anything at all. <laughs> so we have two yep. different spectrums. We have like eating something sugary or not eating anything at all. Definitely don't want to go catabolic and have those muscle gains go bye-bye. So 
I don't know. I yeah. like me a good old bowl of cream of rice with some chicken and salad. <laughs> yep yep so you like more the other way yeah and the thing is you know uh, for those of you out there that have done a hard workout or something like that or maybe you like because i know this has happened to me like when i was because i used to like work on a ranch and shit like that you know like scooping donkey shit and things like that i'd be out there for like hours doing this and not eating or anything and then by the end of that day you're just like what the hell? It feels like you got hit by a bus, but it's like, you know, your brain, your body all physically just taxed. And then you eat something with some carbs in it, some sugars in it. And like, wham, it's like a whole new world. So like anybody who's ever done a hard workout, or I mean, everybody's probably been there or you like get to the point where you're like, I need to eat something now. You know, the classic hangry that you hangry. hear a lot and stuff like that, that has a lot to do with maybe not timing nutrients well. So, you know, if you don't get that post-workout, um, you know, it's hindering your gains, it's hindering your progress probably, but it's also going to be hindering your mood, your brain, mm -hmm. oh, you know? Yes. So that's kind of, you know, I, I didn't mean to go to donkey ranch story, but still <laughs> <laughs> it all oh, comes back together, you know? So, so what does that do? Like me she's angry <laughs> all the time. Who, what's that? My seven-year-old tells me she's hangry all the time. She's learned See? from her mother. There's, she needs some more glucose. <laughs> I know, right? She is. She's an Oreo fanatic. She gets plenty. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. So, like, crave, uh, cravings-wise, right? People are having these cravings. What kind of things can they do to, like, combat them? Yes. Okay. So, I have got a few different things. Um so one of the things I heard in this podcast also is they make the analysis, you know, so many people say like, oh, sugar is like crack. You know, I've been known to say it before. In fact, I was just saying to Brad, like chocolate chip cookies are like crack to me. I just like can't get enough. And that's like the one yeah. thing. My kryptonite is fresh chocolate chip cookies out of the oven. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> when, like, if you make like the crack analogy, and this is going to go a little weird, it's like you have different versions of crack, you know, you have crack, you can snort, you have crack, you can ingest, so, you know, you yep. can do IV or you have crack, you can smoke. And it turns out like smoking crack is the most addictive version of crack. And that's what gets the most people hooked. And you know, the, the, the worst outcomes is if you are smoking crack. So if we take this analogy to sugar, why that's so, you know, addictive is the dopamine release. So like the mm -hmm. dopamine is your happy chemical, like the rewarding chemical. So as you go to those different modes of ingesting crack, you know, the dopamine spikes exponentially. And so the thing about like, if you spike it exponentially, the next time you go to do it, it's not going to like hit as high. You're just going to do it more and more frequently. So, and obviously that's not a good situation. And so like, if we take that analysis and, and take it to sugar in general or sugar type things, because, you know, it does have a very similar uh, reaction on the brain. Um, like if we just straight up, so talking about this chocolate chip cookie, if I just like got this chocolate chip cookie out of the oven and just like plowed it, like obviously my dopamine is going to spike super high because spike I it. love yep. them. It tastes amazing. But like one way we can kind of hack it is to pair it with something. So, um, if we can lower the amount of blood glucose that is emitted by pairing it with something like a fat or a fiber, then we will knock down the dopamine receptor. So instead of like mm -hmm. maybe being a spike like this, maybe it's a spike like this and your brain is just like, oh, well, that was good, but it wasn't like, oh my gosh, good, which right. will cause you to not have these like crazy, you know, cravings later. So, you know, when we say pairing it with a fat, so should I put a scoop of peanut butter on top of this chocolate chip cookie? Probably not, because that will also be very delicious. That sounds that pretty, turn it. pretty damn good, though. I know, because <laughs> so we want to steer away from making it hyper palatable, because anything that's hyper palatable can just go down easy. But like, yeah. and this is something I really, really use during my prep is that like, if I did fit something fun, like the M&Ms into my prep, I pair it with something like green beans. And so I eat my M&Ms and I eat my green beans. And that way, you know, the fiber from the green beans is kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, 
blunt the dopamine hit and then it was like okay like that was good like there's yeah. so many things this prep that I was like yeah and even after my prep I was like that was good but like that wasn't as good as I like remember it being before and I think a lot of that is due to the fact I kind of blunted the dopamine with some fiber so they weren't together though right you didn't like make well, a bowl I- of green beans with m ms on it and just I like take the M and M's in the green beans. Because if that if that's what you did, that's probably why it wasn't as good. <laughs> no, no. One I green bean, have... one M and M. Mix them together. I put them in a, in a blender, actually. Chocolate no. dip green beans. Mm, Everybody, yeah, that'd be probably good. But no, so like I would eat my M and M's, and then I'd like eat my green beans after. So. Yes. Or you yeah, can do okay, it before cool. and. <laughs> or you can eat green beans, but then I'm gonna. And that's because like, of the fiber, right? It, it's balancing yes. it out for the most part. The fiber is lowering the glycemic index overall. So you yeah, know which, things like quick digesting sugars have a high glycemic index. Things that have more fiber, more fats, are going to have like a lower glycemic index. So that's the name of the game. Pair it with something with a lower glycemic index, especially like in the fiber department, and that will blunt that for you. Have you ever done something like that? Or I mean, I guess. Again, you don't have super sugar cravings, so you're yeah. Well, I mean, either way, this is what we do every day with clients, right? Like when we're talking about macros, or we're balancing, you know, profiles of foods and food choices that we suggest to people. I mean, it's going to be, you know, we always talk about eighty twenty being the thing, uh, where you know most of the stuff that we're going to suggest as far as carb sources go are going to involve fiber. I mean, that's pretty traditional dieting in the bodybuilding world but also in the fitness world in general you know like don't wake up and have wonder bread you know wake up and have a bowl of oatmeal or something you know because it has some fiber so minimizing the amount of insulin spike in your blood system all the time is going to help you get progress either way whether it's you know body fat uh burning or building muscle i mean with muscle though you actually could use that to an advantage to a degree but we're not going to go too deep here with that i don't want to go down that path but you know i'd say about 80 percent of the people listening to this right now are looking are going to be losing weight or burning fat right i mean that's what most people want to do i mean if your goal is muscle uh, you're probably eating a pizza bro get out of here you know you're here for the other shit but like yeah, I mean that's the thing. It's uh, it's it's about balancing in a lot of ways, balancing your diet too. So that that's kind of what you're talking about. A lot of people don't think about that though when they're thinking about you know M and M's or something like that, where they're eating something sugary that's specifically sugary, kind of in that twenty percent zone where you know this is not the healthiest food for you, but you want to be a normal person. Uh, but you know, you bring some green beans to the party and you balance it out, or you do whatever. I mean, that's going to be broccoli an advantage. Cheese. Mm. yeah name some other ones what are some other foods people could kind of consider okay i'm gonna have a cheat day at home i'm gonna order you know a round of donuts or something and just smack mm-hmm. down a couple and then after i need to have something because coach kayleen says so so what kind of throw some options out there what what kind of things could people grab from you can also grab like lemon or like juice from lemon or lime as well. And so again, this is another one of my Mm -hmm. prep things that I like every single day this prep I had, I I think I made a reel of it. I made my little drink and I squirted some lemon in there and of course some salt. Anyway, we can find that real, but, um, the lemon juice and and just lemons are something you can squeeze in your water that you're drinking like all the time. And that's just going to really work to again, lower blood glucose levels over the day. And I feel like it keeps you more satiated throughout the day. And that's probably because of this fact that it's lowering your blood glucose level. Excuse me. And you can also do this with cinnamon, which again, I unknowingly did myself because as the carbs got lower, I swapped my PB2 and my cream of rice after my workout with cinnamon. And so I was actually like, before I even knew and listened to this podcast, I was ahead of my time. And so cinnamon is another one of those things that will help lower your blood glucose level as well. Caveat slash warning, cinnamon does have coumadin in it, which can cause all sorts of blood issues. So do not OD on cinnamon. Look up. I think it's like- Damn, no cinnamon challenge? No cinnamon challenge. Oh my God. I've done the cinnamon challenge. challenge. Have you done it? No. No, oh yeah, I've done any it. of those challenges. I've done it like three I'm... times. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's oh. probably why I'm all fucked up, huh? Probably. That explains <laughs> a lot, poisoning. actually. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, the only challenge I'm going to do is the hot wings one. 
So oh we, yeah, you still haven't done that. We talked about that thought, last episode, right? Or, I didn't have the macros for it then. Now, I now you do though. Macros almost. To play you're with. climbing almost. up. You're climbing the ladder. Climbing up. Like the protein in those wings that they give is not up to my standards. So, uh, you know, maybe yeah. next week. I'm hoping to do it next week. And that will be suffering for all of you in the name of entertainment and education. So anyway, I digress. <laughs> Oh, so another thing, like, so those are kind of things that you'll have around the house, which is nice because you don't have to go out and get something. I assume like almost everybody has lemon or lime juice or cinnamon. There are some supplements that you can do to help with this as well. If you're getting proper fish oil throughout the day, which I would guess like most everybody isn't because, you know, I mean, fish oils are popular in the supplement industry, but like a general diet is not getting enough fish oil in it. And a lot of people are eating fish, in my opinion. <laughs> Shit, I need to eat fish until like three months ago. So, but anyway, <laughs> um, fish oils can help again with glucose and glutamine. I really like glutamine. It's something, again, I was actually doing already. I have been using glutamine forever for the gut health aspect of it. But yep. it has also been shown to help, you know, with cravings as well. I'm not sure the pathway on that, if it is still with the um, lowering glucose in the blood. But yeah, you can kind of ramp up the glutamine slowly because if you ramp it up too fast, you're going to have not a fun time in the gut department. But uh, yeah, give that Hashtag a try. the shits. <laughs> hashtag bubble gut <laughs> hashtag don't do leg day <laughs> but anyway <laughs> squats are out <laughs> squats are out um so yeah i mean if you're already taking glutamine maybe ramp it up a little bit if you're having these intense sugar cravings if you aren't taking glutamine maybe start taking glutamine and see if that helps um Another little side note, do not use excess glutamine if you have pre-existing cancer or you are prone to cancer in your history. So that's a little side note. If you're clear with those two things, you can try it out. Of course, always when you're taking supplements, talk with your doctor before and clear it with them. Just yep. a general rule of thumb with any supplements you're going to take. Pretty much, because a yeah. lot of the supplements, you never know what's actually in that shit. So ask exactly. the doctor if that's mm -hmm. a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, cool. Okay, so those are some ways to kind of curb those cravings. Do you have any specific foods that are, uh, you know, because you said, you said green beans, you said broccoli. Are there any other ones on top of that lemon water? Because I mean, also lemon water is way easier, I think, people. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you from my perspective, Kayleen might be the one eating green beans and M&Ms at the same time. But like for me, if I was going to eat like 12 donuts or something, I would just go have, you know, some lemon water because that's easier. And, Dude. you know, it's also it also does other things for you, too. That's really good for you. Like I tell clients to take lemon, drink lemon water all the time. Like, why not? And you can also do it because you were talking about the little like lemon juice thing, right? That you can add I, the water. I squeeze. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I fresh okay. squeezed. Organic. Yeah, fresh, fresh is great. It's the way to go. Yeah. Cut it up, boom, put it in there. Side note with that too. Um, I know you had told me this uh a while, like years ago, that um what was it? You were my tanner, I think it was you that the uh, lemon would balance pH because I would always turn green yep. with my tans and two yes, out of two yep. tans, no turning green after drinking lemon water every single day. Yeah. And when your pH is balanced, you digest every single thing you eat way better. People don't get this. Yeah. Like most people's pH is shit. Like <laughs> anybody listening, go to the store. You can go to like uh, the pharmacy or whatever, and buy pH test strips and test your pH. It's like a few bucks. You will find that most of your day you're out of pH balance. And the interesting mm -hmm. thing is, is a lot of old school, like we're talking about old school bodybuilding before they didn't know any kind of this stuff. The whole goal of the old school bodybuilding diet, which is kind of like what Kayleen's talking about in a lot of ways, like, you know, sugar was not a thing. Those guys didn't eat bread. They wouldn't do it. Like they were just trying to hack things away. They didn't know why, but they were trying to, you know, figure out how to get this balanced diet. And uh, one of the main things was, was a diet that focused on, you know, keeping your pH balance, keeping you kind of like in this alkaline environment where you're burning all the time uh, these nutrients because you digest things a lot better. So that you know you can do that with that lemon water you can do that with 
um, you know, eating a lot of vegetables and things like that, like you mentioned. I mean, there's probably mm-hmm. far more science on this rabbit hole we could go down oh, just yeah. to that to talk about those things. But we we won't get you guys at that one today. But, you know, that's and there's another nice way you can do it, too. For those of you that don't even want to do the lemon water, you can get alkaline water. You know, they sell these things everywhere at the store. You know, you see like the classic um, uh, we don't have a sponsorship, so I'm not going to say any names, but no, there's a ton of them, you know, and you can drink some of that and it helps with a lot of things. You know, it helps like with a ton, like women, for example, uh, they're always worried about cellulite, right? Like you hear this all the time and, you know, obviously they're always looking for the exercise to reduce that or whatever. Uh, a lot of times that's a pH imbalance in your body. So if you correct your pH, you can improve that a lot and like quote me. Quote me, people. I do it every day. So you can definitely do that stuff. I was one of those ladies asking, how yeah. do I get rid of the cellulite during my right? season? And I mean, everybody water. kind of thinks about it at some point. And, yeah. you know, it's funny that you say improvement season, because why would that happen in improvement season? Because you're eating a lot of foods and things that are not in yeah. that environment. Oh, my gosh. Especially last improvement season and pretty much every other improvement season. It's just been, but this is a new one. Tell yep. me right now. It's, it's a, a new, new day. Game. It's a new game. It's a new uh, day. Yes. Okay. So, la- well, actually, you want to do your little cue that we talked about? You, your little hack? Little one hack. more, uh, like just one more hack for carbon yeah, cravings. Uh, yes, yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, are you Scottish so, now? <laughs> I, that was pretty bad if that was Scottish. I don't know what I was doing. I think I was just... <laughs> going off but um yeah one thing i wanted to bring up you guys listening if you made it this far thank you by the way Uh, make sure you're following us or subscribe to wherever you're hearing this now or seeing it because we got more coming kayleen is always coming at me hey we got to do another episode hey we got to do another episode so so, uh one thing i was going to say too though uh that you guys can do as an easier hack, maybe if you don't want to go through such, ex- you know, maybe like hearing what we're saying right now sounds kind of extreme. They're like, okay, hormones, insulin, ghrelin, leptin. What what are you talking about? I just ate an Oreo for lunch, man. Like, you know, one thing you can do is um, intermittent fasting, stuff like that. This is one way to already start regulating these hormones. Kayleen's talked about in every way, like from leptin to ghrelin to insulin to all that. And uh, a lot of times it reduces your sugar craving because what I'm, you know, like when we're talking about sugar craving, we're talking about in another sense, almost like, just like you were doing with the, the drug analogy. uh, We're talking about addiction in a lot of ways for people, Mm. people that don't have, you know, any perspective on nutrition, they eat whatever they eat and then they crave something and they eat that. And then they crave something and they eat that. And, you know, even people that have good perspective on nutrition, they can still get into that spot too. So, you know, it can be this, this point where it's almost like a food addiction. And one of the best ways to break any addiction is to abstain from something, right? Like if you go, if you went every weekend and you're like, oh man, I get way too drunk every Friday night with my friends. Here's an easy way to not get drunk. Don't drink motherfuckers. <laughs> that's, that's the fix. So in, in, you know, intermittent fasting, it can sound kind of, you know, crazy if you haven't done it before. It's where, you know, you're eating in a, in a timed window, but I mean, we do that all the time anyway. Everybody's doing intermittent fasting to a degree, just depends on your window. So a lot of times when you abstain from food, maybe for a little bit longer, like you skip that breakfast for a day and your first meal is going to be lunch, uh, you know, through that time where you didn't eat, your body was regulating all these things. It was kind of taking some of these levels down. You know, it it really boosts your leptin. And it makes you feel, you know, less hungry at that point. Not that you need to know all these things. I know I said I was going to go from the the lesser sciencey approach. But realistically, what happens is when you're fasting, once you get used to it, you're in this zone where now you don't have the same hunger levels when you go eat. And so it's an interesting hack that you can do that's quite a bit easier. And, you know, in a lot of ways, could be a good starting place for some people if they wanted to try it. I mean, you just figure out an eating window that works for you because there is no right or wrong. I mean, the standard is kind of 16-8. And I've done content on this for years. Uh, I, I put a people on this sometimes whenever they want to, if they want to try it, we're just talking about eating the same stuff at different times, guys. It's nothing that crazy. And if it helps you, it gets you results. It makes you feel better, gets you healthier. Why wouldn't you? So that's just another hack. The one thing I love about intermittent intermittent fasting (laughs) is like, you know, usually the window doesn't lead too late into the night. And for me personally, 
with my client experience as well. When the clock strikes past seven, that's when the naughtier decisions are made in the sweets Good. department, you know, desserts, uh, you know, for me, the longest time I would um, like almost, you know, cause being a mom is hard. <laughs> like I would celebrate putting the kid to bed and I would have like some little sugary treat right before bed. Cause it's like, yeah, I made it. The kid's alive. She's in bed. Nobody <laughs> like died. And that, again, my pleasure reward was like you know something sweet and it's like when you yep. take out the intermittent fasting and for me I've, I've eliminated eating like two hours before bed and so it's kind of like that but not but like similar and it's like yep. oh I see something sweet and it's like well I can't have it because you know it's outside of my window and boom decisions are made that are more beneficial to your goals Totally. Yeah. So it's just another hack, you know, a lot of tools you guys got here. And I think we still have even more, right? Oh, you got yeah. another one? Oh yeah. Probably the most important sugar craving tool and it is absolutely free and it is motherfucking sleep. <laughs> sleep. What's sleep. that? Sleep motherfucker. Oh, what the know, hell is so. sleep? <laughs> <laughs> it is the act of lying in your bed, closing your eyes and going and... to sleep. No. <laughs> uh, so I, I get so frustrated sometimes because people don't prioritize sleep. Like, and of course, like we we were all young at some point and you might still not be able to prioritize sleep, but I'm an old ass lady. So like my <laughs> sleep is like high priority. <laughs> if it's 830 and I'm nowhere near my bed, I'm getting a little antsy. It's but game anyway, over. <laughs> it's game over, man. If something <laughs> starts at nine o'clock, don't even invite me. Anyway, <laughs> so the, uh, Sleep is super important. And, and I know people, everybody says sleep is important, but I don't think a lot of people understand why from a hormonal aspect, sleep is important. Sorry, my little light went out here. Um, so, and I'll back up by saying, and referring to the study that I heard about that um, they basically had a bunch of people sleeping in a controlled center and they um, tested their breath every 10 seconds that had to be like a ridiculous amount of data points but um see what they're metabolizing at that time of yep. the sleep cycle so you know you have your different sleep cycles yada yada and they found that different sleep cycles meant they were metabolizing different things and so like clearly that that signals to us that sleep is not that we didn't know this already but very important in metabolism and if you're missing out on certain parts of your sleep, like REM sleep or different things like that. You could be missing out on some metabolism on different things, not to mention that like metabolism aside, all of your body, like your body needs sleep to recover. So not even about sugar cravings, but let's just say that like, if you want any results, you need to get your sleep in check first more so than almost anything else. But anyway, I digress. Totally. So, um, why this matters to you is that because of these different metabolic pathways that are interrupted, then of course your hormones are going to be interrupted. So you're going to have effects on both your leptin and ghrelin. So leptin tells you that you're full ghrelin tells you that you're hungry. So when your ghrelin is off the charts, you're hungry all the time. And it's also going to fuck with your leptin, which is going to tell you, which is not going to tell you that you're full. So you're going to have like this hungry all the time, never satiated hormonal balance because you're not sleeping properly which i get shift workers you have an excuse and we thank you for your service because i could never do that in a million years but if you're just staying up and scrolling instagram for no goddamn good reason and you're complaining about your hunger don't even with me okay <laughs> get your sleep together <laughs> yeah a hundred percent i mean Sleep's the number one thing. Have you ever tried to stay up for multiple days? Um, I had a child, so in no sense, yes, I did. You, okay, so you have, <laughs> I voluntarily <laughs> tried to stay up for multiple days once, and it was a mistake. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody who thinks sleep's not important if you're sitting here and you're like, ah, I'm good with five hours a night. I'm good with four hours a night. Okay, if you're so tough, go ahead. And stay up for three fucking days. I dare you. Anybody out here listening right now, if you're like, ah, sleep's not that important, stay up for one night fully, okay? One full night 
and go about your life the next day and tell me how well you do. And then you'll realize just how much sleep affects you when your big toe hurts because it's so damn tired. You can't walk anymore. You know what I mean? Like sleep is is like it's crazy how much people ignore sleep because it is the foundation of every single thing that happens in your body. This is like, you know, there's so much deeper we could go into what happens in your body when you sleep. But end of the day, you're not burning fat if you're not sleeping good. If you're you're not building muscle as good as you could if you're not sleeping good. You're not being healthy. You're not going to live as long. Take notes, people. If you want to live longer, sleep longer. I just gave you a life hack. You want to live longer, sleep longer. And it will also help you not crave food as much like Kayleen's talking about, which is also advantageous to your goal. So basically you're stacking the deck on greatness. If you're sleeping. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It starts with optimization, man. Like you gotta, gotta set yourself up for success because by not sleeping, you're setting yourself up for failure, essentially. That's it. That's 100% it. So, I mean, that's a lot of hacks. What else? Oh you got gosh. any more on here right now, or where are we at? How far so far? I, that, I mean, we've been talking for a while, haven't we? Huh? I don't even know when we started this, but it's know. been going. It's. I think it's about an hour. So you I guys are still here. Asking. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Make sure you're following us and uh, tell us what's next. Do you do you know the topic for the next one? Should we give people a prequel, or you have no idea? Uh, no idea. I, I okay. have a few, but I don't know. We exactly can take comments. Anybody who made yeah. it here. Like, let us know what you guys want to hear next. You guys liking the vibe of what we're doing? Share this shit. Share it. Yeah. Share it. Um. Yeah. I think like I think literally, if every single person who listens to this shares this, they will affect someone's life greatly. Like, because there, I mean, sugar addiction is so rampant in you know, especially the United States that it's like, unless you're surrounding yourself in this type of like echo chamber per to so to say you know like so many people aren't and it could take just one person sharing and a friend seeing and being like huh you know I'm addicted to sugar let me listen to this and see and boom you could change their life for the rest of their like the rest of their life is what's cool about social media and that's my thoughts about that boom I like it that's 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 the truth. And we didn't give you the last hack. Uh, if you share it, you're curbing your sugar cravings by default. Yes, I didn't tell you guys, but I'm telling you now. <laughs> you know, that's, that's Trust what's me, up. I'm a so, scientist. <laughs> I was a scientist. That's it. <laughs> Kayleen, the science queen, tells you it's true. So that's what's yeah. up. Do you got a dad joke this week or what? You got oh, a Brad joke? I don't know, man. I feel like Brad's, Brad's out of jokes these days. He's no longer funny. I feel like you had the better dad joke this week. I don't know. I, I mean, I can't I can't even recall anything. So I guess we'll save that. Anybody with any good jokes, submit them and we'll sell them. We'll sell yes. them. We'll put them on here. <laughs> We're not going to sell them. We'll put them on the show, though, and we'll give you credit. <laughs> yes, um, yes. All right, cool. So you guys submit any questions, anything you want us to cover. We will cover it. Otherwise, I think we're done. Anything else, yeah. Kaylee? No, I think we'll sign it off from here. Thanks again for listening. And the next one, I know we always say this, will not be a month. I'm going to freaking hold you to like two weeks or three weeks. We'll see. Oh, man. <laughs> yep, we'll do that. We'll some get there. vacations coming up. So, uh, yeah, I got another cruise in like a couple weeks. So uh, that'll be exciting. I have to get some if content wanna, for that cruise. Exactly. You should follow me if you ever want to take a cruise and you want to like not derail all your progress. Uh, I'll be sharing all that stuff on there. So go to Ryan, look for my face. He'll tag me and uh, yeah, Boom. give me a follow. Yep. <laughs> follow us. You guys follow us. All right. Thanks everybody. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.